All right, we're at Siskiyou Summit. They say to carry chains. So we got back to the dock safely. We removed the bird's nest from the mast. Uh, Amber finally came by to visit the boat for the first time where she tried real boat yoga. Uh, and here's the thing, it's getting very cold and the storms are walloping the coast of Oregon and Northern California. So the question is, can we get the boat down this year? Not to mention, my work is going crazy because it's peak season. The main manager of my business is gone. So the answer is no, I can't get it down this year. We're gonna have to just push back the delivery date from Portland, Oregon, down to the San Francisco Bay. I'm loving this boat, but there's definitely a lot more projects than I thought there would be. So what does that mean? Well, it means that I get a chance to take a breath, uh, I can hang out with Amber, I can go test the, test the dinghy. Uh, we cheated and flew to Hawaii where I almost got a body part of mine bitten off by a sea turtle. I sold Sharky, which was bittersweet, but again, <laughs> a lot of boat people end up collecting lots and lots of boats in their life and then they get stuck not being able to use any of them. Yeah, you're good. Last sale of Sharky. It was bittersweet, but I'm always trying to simplify my life, so that was good. And then I was able to get back to work on Isara. So what's the new delivery date? We're thinking sometime in early June, and uh, I still have the captain and crew that I would pay to help me because I feel like I could do the trip, but it's pretty nerve wracking. You'd go over the Columbia Bar. I mean, this boat's been over the Columbia Bar apparently 20 times, but that's pretty daunting for me, let alone a six day nonstop trip. So I still have a captain and one crew that I have uh, set aside with also a potential additional crew. Uh, my best friend back from high school who, uh, kind of volunteered himself to do this crazy trip. So yeah, so we got some of the delivery dates wrapped up. So now let's get to it. Let's get to the huge growing list of boat projects of Isara. So let me show you our list of projects that I have compiled after having done a few trips on this boat. To start out with, standing rigging. That is in progress as we know. We need to pick it up from the boatyard in a few weeks. The leaks, let me tell you, this is something I've been working on because I'm freaked out. that I've dried the bilge a few times now. It took a lot of effort having to trek everything and vacuum everything out. I am petrified that there are leaks coming through the keel bolts themselves because it just seems like the water just seeps up from the bottom. And if that happens, then this is gonna be a disaster financially and work-wise and everything. Okay, test and load the dinghy. I did test it, I loaded it up. You might've seen it on the last video. It's already on the boat, so we got that done. Uh, the engine overheating, that is something that I'm still working on. Uh, but here's the thing, the engine does seem to be, it actually it just frankly is very reliable. So while I am concerned about that, you know, at the same time, it's been super reliable on three trips now, actually four trips now. Grease the propeller. That is something, so there was a lot of slop in the propeller. I just have a feeling it probably hasn't been greased. So we're gonna dive under the boat and grease the propeller next up in this video. Let me go through the rest of these real quickly. So running rigging, we wanna clean that. Uh, yes, the alternator. In our last trip, I uh, basically I found out that the alternator had burnt up, so there you go. So we need a new alternator. Uh, chart plotter, install two more batteries, install an inverter, fabricate a sea berth, 
create an AIS transponder, make a DC generator, uh, create a Wi-Fi router and cameras so I can monitor the boat remotely, fix the electric winch uh, because that's not working. You press the button and it works for like a second and then it stops working, make a high water alarm, uh, get a new modern radar, make solar and install new speakers because life is too short to not listen to music. So let's get to it. First up, leaks. All right, so it is, let's see, the next morning after the mast has been unstepped and the boat's a bit of a mess, but I am so happy because what I did last night was I put down these uh, paper towel. Well, first of all, I dried the bilge, the two inches of water. Then I toweled down the bilge to get it relatively dry. And then I actually used paper towels to get it completely, completely dry. And here's the exciting bit. It is completely dry. I the corner, I, I see the screen is flickering a bit. I guess this is a from the light, but um, the paper towel there by the keel bolt is totally dry. I have found the leak, which is right here, or at least one of the leaks. And then here's the rear keel bolt, and that is dry. Um, so what does this mean? This means that I do not have keel bolt leaks, as far as I can tell. And that is such a major, major relief. It means the boat is strong. Um, sure, I have some little niggling leaks, you know, up here. Actually, this is the most hilarious thing ever. When I, when I took this mast plate down, this sea talk was sitting right here, collecting the drips of rain. But anyways, it's probably leaking there. It's probably leaking over there. And here is my taxi calling. But anyways, so I have these small little leaks and you know, that's what's causing the, the water in there. I could feel the wetness from these wires that go from the starboard water tank um, and then following the electrical wires down that are bonded to the keel bolt, the water is coming from that section. So at least right now, with it being dry for the past two days. That's the only wetness that I could feel that's coming through and the bottom has remained completely dry. It's such a major relief. It's kind of unnerving that it leaks at all because in my mind, it's like, okay, so I'm relying on the bilge pump to pump it out while I'm not gonna be here for two months, but you know, it's still such a massively better situation than a leaking keel bolt. So, oh, latest update, um, inside there, so here's, here's the mast, this way is forward, inside this and inside that um, is wet. So the leak has to be coming from up here or further. And the leak is also there, so it's at least there or forward. I'm losing track of all the frickin' pieces now, man. This will need to go. Oh, are you kidding me? God damn it. Ugh. Yep. It's a nice gouge right there. Exactly what I was trying not to do. That sucks. That is just wet. Okay, so let's 
definitely coming from under there. Man, fucker. <sighs> okay. It's worth trying to check it. Ah, yes. Yes. Living the dream. It's like I'm in a fort that's alive and crawling all over me. Oh, hey, look at that. You gotta be shitting me. First of all, I just found the spinnaker. So that's nice. Also, found the windless control. Already knew about the water tank. God, I wish I could ask somebody to come and hand me the spray bottle. But do you see that? This is like looking for uh, the fountain, fountain of youth. But it's like the boat fountain of death, of rot and mildew and pestilence. And there it is. I don't know if that's the only leak. It seems unlikely, but then again, it's not really raining right now. Can you see? Can you see that? <laughs> okay, I was so excited. Shit, all right. Back to it. Oh, you know what I think it is? I think it's the hose connection. Wow, that is a... Man, that's some fatty hull thickening right there. I think that that is the hose connection to that drain. And what's funny is I had something very similar on my O'Day leak just like that. I'll be honest, I don't know if I have it in me to do that tonight. Fuck, I got, let's see, what time is it? Chick Korea, it's 7.30. We gotta try. We just, we gotta at least go for it. Because if I stop that leak, yeah, and it's raining, it's the perfect time to test. So I just, I can't really, I, I can't figure out a good excuse not to do that tonight. Okay. Guys, I found the leak. I found the actual drip. And I calculated one drip every five seconds. So that's 20 milliliters per minute, I think. Anyways, long story short, I calculated it to about 14.4 liters per month which calculates to about 3.9 something, about four gallons per month. So, I don't know if that's the only leak, but I think that could explain 
the full leak. Um, four gallons per month, that's a gallon per week. That leak legitimately drove me insane. And now it's fixed. Next up, I installed a new navigation system because the GPS map from whatever the late 90s or early 2000s was starting to, I think, have some water damage and I wanted to go open source anyways. So here's what I did. I don't have good video footage of it, but I had to snake a wire through there all the way in the back or in the side of the hull there. I installed this screen, which runs OpenCPN. The computer is right down in there. I don't know if you can see that because it's really dark. And installed a touch screen at the navigation station. Now to turn on the computer, I've wired it in the BIOS so that it's an always on computer. So I just throw the instrument uh, breaker and boom, there you go. And open up OpenCPN. This display mirrors exactly what is displaying in the cockpit. So same computer, two different monitors. So not only can you navigate from here, but when I install the PyPilot autopilot, I'm gonna be able to control the autopilot from down here as well. Ah, greasing the prop. Is it really greasing the prop or is it really greasing my hair with the you know what of all the liveaboards in this little outlet of the Columbia River? Yeah, nothing like jumping in the Columbia River in mid-December, but Let's get it done. All right. Well, we got it on. I think I'm going to float like crazy. Um, so we will see. I was also checking for obstructions in the raw water intake. And you may be able to tell, but uh, I didn't have a weight belt on, so I was very floaty, and in this first attempt, I also didn't have any uh, oxygen. Like I, I ended up bringing a air pump up, which worked much better, uh, but this was a clip from the first time where I didn't have an air pump yet. Well, it's cold, but not as bad as I thought it would be. Same problem is having enough air to do what you need to do. Also, the water is so murky, you can barely see your fingers. In fact, I think if you reached your hand out all the way, you couldn't even see it. So it was so murky and nasty. So I felt it. As far as I could feel, it felt okay. Get a little dizzy. But I was able to check and verify that there were no obstructions in the raw water intake and we got the propeller greased. Just barely worth that effort. <laughs> Next up, we installed new sets of speakers on both sides of the inside of the boat. So I don't have clips of that, but those were installed. Is this going on? Yeah. Okay. Now, if you enjoy watching Peter suffer like I do, please watch more, subscribe, and continue to support our journey because we hopefully one day will get to a warm, sunny, 
place where I can finally relax on the boat. But until then, we've got more projects. That's it.